Hi there, and welcome back to the shop. I know it's been a few years since I've uploaded new content, so long time no see. I've been busy on other projects, but am freshening up the channel, bringing it back as machines and more. On this channel, I will be broadening the scope of topics, incorporating different topics like electronics, computer hardware and custom builds, uh, reviews, maybe even homebrewing beer, all sorts of do-it-yourself projects, and a whole lot more. I might even do some barbecuing like I've done during past projects. Now, this is going to become a one-stop shop for anyone who loves to tinker. With that, a warm welcome back, and let's get started on our new project. I sincerely hope you're all doing well and staying healthy. It's the middle of 2020 and amidst the global pandemic, many of us have shifted to working from home arrangements. And whether it's school or work, a desk is a critical part of the modern office environment. Unfortunately, not all of us are set up with an office or somewhere to work comfortably. In other words, you might find yourself shifting from place to place to get comfortable, or finding a quiet place to take calls or jump on meetings. To top it all off, makeshift arrangements make ergonomics a challenge, leading to poor posture and various aches and pains. That's why to kick off machines and more, we are building a mobile computer desk. Equipped with wheels, once you can build this, you can truly make your working from home experience a flexible and comfortable one. The advantages are numerous. You can use it in a designated location without compromise or go from place to place in an attempt to avoid your noisy roommates. Then when you're all done, at the end of the day you can park it in a convenient location with all of your goodies right where you need them the next day. This is a wonderful addition to wherever you call home and perfect for the modern remote workforce. For this build, I'll be constructing primarily out of black walnut, one of my personal favorite hardwoods. It's strong, yet easy on tools and gentle to work with. It's boldly colored with fantastic grain that accentuates its appearance. It takes any finish well and is forgiving for any level of woodworking ability. Now I'll have reference dimensions in the video today and I will also leave them down below. Depending on the casters you end up with, you might have to alter the height of legs. And if you want it wider or longer, I'll tell you which dimensions you must keep the same. For the top, I'll be doing the build with a walnut veneer plywood top. You could saw your piece from a full sheet of hardwood veneer ply, or you could order a quarter, uh, quarter of a full sheet like I did from Home Depot. And this one was about $30 and was shipped to me already dimensioned to the size we need for the build. So it's quite a good deal since a full sheet of plywood like this could easily cost upwards of $100. Being plywood, it's dimensionally stable, so we don't have to go overboard with specialized attachment solutions and we can also easily build up the edges to give it our custom appearance. And this build is aimed at the beginner or intermediate level woodworker. You'll need a way to rip lumber to width, such as with a table saw or a circular saw with an edge guide. And you'll also need a power drill. For our joinery, I'll be showing a combination of pocket hole screws and the Festool Domino. You can use both or either, depending on what you have. Finally, while hand sanding is perfectly fine, to save some time, a power sander is recommended. I've had my Craig branded pocket hole jig ever since I started woodworking, and it's a fantastic handy tool that'll grow with your woodworking skill. I don't recommend it for every project, especially not for the uh, fine woodworking or furniture pieces, uh, uh, but my belief is that they have their place in woodworking. Uh, my favorite part is that it's a very approachable tool that can get someone a beginner or intermediate woodworking even more engaged in learning the art of woodworking. Um, anytime you can easily conceal those pocket hole screws, they'll be fine to use. Uh, so as I, I'll be demonstrating today, it'll make an excellent and durable joint. You can even combine it with domino joinery as I'll be showing here. 
Um, it'll make it easier to assemble and you'll still retain its excellent breakdown abilities. A pocket hole is a diagonally drilled counterboard hole that allows a special screw to pass through and grip in tight to the receiving piece of wood. Now it's really hard to drill a hole like this freehand which is why a jig is so critical. With a jig like this and a clamp to get you started, it'll run about $40 to $50. And uh, I'll, I'll leave links down below so you can pick one up if needed. Um, I don't recommend getting a super fancy one since as your woodworking skill advances, this isn't necessarily a tool you'll want to depend on. However, it's a very nice and handy tool to have around. Now on the bottom of the jig are a series of numbers, uh, which you'll need to adjust to the piece, uh, thickness of the piece you'll be drilling in. And since I'll be drilling in both inch and a quarter and three quarter inch thicknesses, I'll have to set the jig accordingly when we start working. More on that in a little bit. The thickness of the two pieces being joined governs the screw length. Now Craig provides a reference chart and you can easily find other reference charts, especially if you have different thicknesses that you're joining together. For this project, I'll be using inch and a quarter pocket screws to join the four quarter stock to the six quarter stock and two inch screws to join the six quarter stock to six quarter stock. I'll be using fine thread screws since we'll be working in hardwood. Uh, typically the coarse thread screws are for softwoods or softer hardwoods like poplar. Uh, some kits come with a face clamp that you can use to attach the jig uh, to the piece you're drilling into. Uh, it looks just like this. And that's handy, uh, but if you have a work surface that can take a clamp, uh, like I do, uh, that can work a lot better, especially for repeated drilling and you'll save a lot of time that way. Uh, for the assembly, if you're only using pocket screws, this type of clamp here uh, really works well. This end will go into the pocket hole and it'll clamp tight so the piece won't slip when you put that first screw in. For the legs, base, and the bottom trussel, I'll use six quarter hardwood. For the top aprons and edging for the top, I'll use four quarter. Now, you don't need a planer or a jointer for this project, provided you're using lumber that surfaced at least two faces and one edge, although it's, it wouldn't hurt and it's always a good idea to make sure you have properly four squared lumber. So I'll get started cutting and I'll show you the dimensions for the hardwood cuts. quick tip is, as you're cutting, uh, to arrange uh, the pieces, um, if you're cutting it all from a single board in the way you cut it. So that way when it comes time to pair off the legs, you can take the two that were together. That'll give you the best grain matching and ensure that your project has a consistent look, um, aesthetically speaking. So for each of our uh, sub assemblies, we have two legs, a bottom base part, and a top apron. And so we have two of each. I've uh, made sure that we uh, have the adjacent pieces from the same board uh, so that we have a consistent grain coloration on each one. That's pretty important for the overall aesthetics. This will be the trestle, this is the long component that joins two sub-assemblies together in conjunction with the two top aprons. And you'll see, um, you'll see some of the uh, some walnut, uh, when you get it, it sometimes it, you'll, you'll end up with a piece like this. And this is okay to use uh, on the inside, uh, on the blind side of the board. Um, now if, um, 
you're going for a pretty high-end build, I would avoid this. But since it's a it's a project for use around the home, it's definitely fine. Um, I I'm very happy with this. It's not something you'll you'll notice and and won't affect the structural integrity either. And then lastly, we have the trim pieces. These will go around the plywood top to conceal the edges and also build up a little bit of thickness. Modern computer desks for sitting come in at about 750 millimeters or 29 and a half inches in height. Although that's not necessarily an optimal height for everyone. It's more of a one size fits the average person type of height. You can add or subtract to fit your needs. Whatever casters you end up using, just measure and subtract that from the overall height. If you've determined your leg length, all four legs need to be the same length. Otherwise, you're going to get a wobbly desk. In addition, the side aprons, as well as the bottom, the, the bottom foot that goes between the legs, now these all have to be the same length. So you can cut these together. Uh, on the miter saw, but you can also use a miter gauge to cut these at the same time. That kind of ensures that they're consistent length. But if you go slowly, uh, you can also cut them separately too and just feel uh, once they're the same length, that's, that's when you gotta stop. Front and back aprons, as well as the bottom trestle that joins the two side assemblies, these all have to be the same exact length also. So as long as you keep those dimensions the same, you should end up with a square desk. So here's the desktop. Uh, for this, we're going with a piece of pre-cut walnut veneer plywood. I got mine from Home Depot online. Um, Pricing-wise, it works out to be about the same as if I just bought a full sheet from my local lumber store and cut into four pieces. But this is the Columbia a formaldehyde-free uh, plywood, and it's a pretty good for indoor projects. And uh, the veneer, it, it's pretty even. The grain, the seams are pretty, pretty good. The corners were a little bit banged up, not 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 too bad, um, but but we're gonna we're gonna cut it um, so that uh, we get a nice uh, straight edge, so we can attach our trim pieces to it. Um, and and we got to be careful when working with this because we don't want to damage the top before. Um, before we're able to, to give it a sanding and finishing. So uh, be very careful with it. I think I would keep the cardboard piece to put on the face side anytime it's being worked. With our pieces cut, we can move on to the pocket screw joinery. But before drilling, do a mock layout to check for any potential defects in the wood you might want to hide, and also to make sure the best sides are showing. Mark the side you'll be drilling on so you don't ruin the show side. Uh, I'll drill the pocket holes on the side where it's not visible. The only part I have to compromise on for this build is the bottom trestle. You can get plugs to fill the holes, but I think the non-matching color or grain will be more of a problem aesthetically. You have to choose a side to show the pocket holes in this case. So in general, you want to pick the side that's less visible. I'd personally choose the inside of the desk since, since it's in a less prominent location. If you're using dominoes like I will be, now is a good time to mark off the joint. I'll set the jig body to match the thickness of the piece being drilled. This is very important. Too shallow and the screw could go through the other board. Likewise, set the stop collar on the drill bit to match. If you're using the Craig face clamp, just slide the clamp into the jig, align your workpiece, adjust the set screw and clamp down. Then drill the hole with a continuous motion. When the bit bottoms out on the stop collar, retract the bit while maintaining some rotation on the bit. Now some of the fancier jigs have a vacuum attachment on the end of the jig where some chips get ejected. I'll also cut some domino mortises to help with alignment and also give the joint some added strength. The pocket screw joint alone is strong enough for most purposes and they're certainly rated uh, as such by Craig. Uh, for the top aprons, I'll cut the dominoes to allow for a small reveal. For pocket screws only, you can also make the reveal simply by offsetting when you attach. More on that when we do assembly. 
At this point, if you have a router or router table, you can also do a gentle round over to break the edges. This is optional since when doing the sanding, you can just break the edges. And so if you don't have a router, that's completely fine for this project. For assembly, we'll join the two side sub-assemblies first. This is where the right angle clamp comes in very handy. One end will insert into the pocket hole and I'll screw the other one in. Then I'll remove the clamp and drive the other screw in. Heavy torque is not necessary. Make sure you set the clutch so you don't over torque it since you can easily strip out the wood here. The bottom foot will align flush with the bottom of the legs. If you'd like, before attaching the aprons, mark off a line for the reveal. I like about three millimeters or an inch and an uh, or an eighth of an inch uh, for this application. Just set the piece back a little for some visual intrigue. When the side assemblies are done, it's time to join them with the aprons and the trestle. It gets a little trickier with workspace management since it's now a much larger assembly. So this is the underside of the joint, um, so this will be really difficult to see when it's all built up. Now if you were to put it on the inside of the piece on the bottom, that's still an okay place to put it. Um, I definitely would use two screws without the domino. With the main frame complete, now it's time to move on to the top. I've done my own fresh cut here just to make sure it's perfectly straight, but realistically speaking, you can get the factory edge to work, um, especially if, you, if it's a high quality uh, factory. Um, we're also using fasteners here, but test fit it first. I'll cut the side trim flush to the inside and attach that first. You can use glue here if you like. It does help guarantee a seam free joint. And then I'll cut the long trim flush out to the pieces and we'll also screw and glue that in place. We'll use the pocket screws to help us attach the trim. Uh, I would probably put one on the end here, another one in the middle, another here, and, and kind of the same thing. For mine, I'll also supplement it with dominoes to make the alignment a little easier. Uh, they're definitely not required. now. This is what I was saying about working on the cardboard because that we want to preserve uh, the structural integrity of the of the desktop. So that that side being the show side, we got to take care of it. With that complete, now we can do some finish sanding and then do a round over for the desktop. I'll go with a heavier round over here, but if you're just using a sander or a hand sander, you could just break the end edge gently. It's a lot easier on the forearms when working on it if you have a more aggressive round over profile. The reason we use thicker trim is so we can put a bigger round over on it and that makes for a comfortable working surface. I'm using a 3 8 inch uh, round over bit, but you could also use a half inch. I, I, it'll complement this well. What I've done is I've gone ahead and backed out all the pocket screws so that way the pocket screw tips don't interfere with the router bit and catch it. Um, you don't really need the screws anymore. You can always put them back later on, but uh, because we glued it, they don't really serve a huge purpose at this point. On the on the farthest end of the corner, I'm going to do what's called a climb cut. Uh, you'll see that in a second here. Um, I'm, I'm cutting backwards for just that little portion here to avoid tear out. Uh, for the rest, we'll do a gentle pass and then we'll do a heavier pass all the way.
I won't sand the top heavily since we are dealing with a veneer, uh, a thin veneer top. Uh, here is where hand sanding the trim pieces will be very, really helpful. And just do a gentle finish sand with 200 grit on the top to make sure it's smooth. And then we're ready to apply the finish. For the finish, I want something very durable. I normally spray waterborne polyurethane, but since I'm gearing this towards the beginning woodworker, I'll go with a wipe on, wipe off polyurethane. Now, I really like General Finish's Armor Seal for this application. Uh, when applied in numerous coats, it makes for a very uh, long lasting, durable top coat. Uh, before that, I really like using a medium walnut Danish oil to also accentuate the grain of the walnut a little. This is something you would do uh, to taste. I wipe on one coat and I let it dry out. Three to four coats of armor seal is perfectly sufficient for the frame of the unit. However, I would recommend going heavier on the top since it is a work surface. Seven or more coats wouldn't be a bad idea as long as you keep those coats thin. It's also good to keep in mind, try to treat each side similarly. You'll do this to minimize any uneven reactions to humidity changes. Now for the top, it's plywood and it's not as critical, so a few coats on the underside should be enough. I'm doing thin coats uh, with light sanding with 320 grit in between each coat. You see a, a good film is starting to build up, so we'll go up to seven and see what that looks like. In order to attach the top, I'll drill a shallow pocket hole and use a half inch pocket hole screw. We only need four in each corner and then one in the middle of the long stretcher. Finally, we'll attach the casters with some wood screws and look, now you're really part of the mobile workforce. All right, so after attaching the top onto the frame, the desk is done. Now you can, it's a mobile work desk. You can roll around. I really like the finish from the, from the armor seal. It gives a good understated look really brings out the natural beauty of the wood. I hope you've enjoyed this build video. I'll try to do a video later on showing some suggested peripheral layouts and uh, or uh, cord and power management setups. I would appreciate your engagement so please use the links down below if you found something you'd like to purchase and also thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel so you can get the latest updates on new content. Thank you and see you in the next project.